right what's up everybody it's Dave from only a Dave's and today I'm gonna film a turbo putt tutorial for you um, I'm gonna demonstrate the three different grips for the turbo three different ways to throw it the highs of the and highs of the straight shot the three different ways to stand the three stances and if you stick around one final tip on how I get a little bit of extra pop a little extra zip that helps me throw it farther than most players I've seen you know attempt them so um, got a good video for you, so um, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Let's talk and load. Um, the most important is the grip. So the way I was introduced to the turbo, holding it like this, the four fingers around the edge, um, the thumb you can see underneath there on the other side. Um, this creates a wind up and deliver type of throw. Um, you have to get the momentum going backwards because you can't really hold, you can't maneuver the disc that well, but it does offer good spin and it forces you to use the same throw every single time when you make it. So there are benefits to that. Um, but I do think that this grip is a little bit more advanced. The middle finger underneath now, you can see nothing else has changed. That just gives you a little bit extra control. Now I can manipulate, I can release it at different angles. I can throw it harder, I'll be able to throw it farther. Ultimately, it should be, I should make me a better turbo putter. Adding this, if you've never tried it, should make you a little bit more confident in the release and the power that you can put behind it. Next, I think the two fingers underneath, uh, shout out to Tim Rappert. Uh, he's the one who showed me this. So the two fingers underneath along the inside edge, thumb still across. Um, this grip, I believe, offers the most spin. It offers the best control, and ultimately, it does give you the best distance as well, I believe. So. <laughs> If it feels good in your hand, if it doesn't feel good in your hand, I would I would try this one. But if this feels good, give that a shot. If this feels the best, give that a shot. Or you know, if this feels the best, go ahead and try that. But ultimately, I think you know the benefits of the one finger, two finger underneath give you extra control is what you what you're gonna want. Um, now the three ways to throw it. I'm gonna demonstrate some throws here for you. The uh, hyzer first. You want to keep your elbow tucked in when you go to throw. So you're bringing your arm on this type of angle. That's going to force the disc to fly left to right for you if you keep your elbow tucked in when you go to release. Um, now, if you look at the opposite, the Anheuser, you bring your elbow up and out. Now you can see the angle of release is going to be like this. It's going to be immediately right to left out of your hand. So this, left to right, sort of dip the disc down like that when you go to throw. Elbow up and out for the Anheuser, boom. Um, so I'll demonstrate a few of those for you quickly here. Um, here's the hyzer, you know, elbow tucked in, it'll fly left to right. I'm not that far away, like 15 feet, but you can see the angle of the release, you know, it is, you know, it's coming out on the hyzer, it will hyzer. I'm just trying to show you the, the basics here. Now the Anheuser elbow out, you should be able to see the difference of the flight there. It is traveling right to left immediately out of the hand. Um, these are great for tailwind but you can see you can manipulate the flight and throw a hyzer and hyzer. You can manipulate it very easy just with your body. You're only changing the elbow. The, the position of the elbow entirely is what will determine how the disc flies for you. Um, then right in between that, you keep your elbow just straight right in the middle. So hyzer and hyzer, straight shot. Um, I'll throw a few for you, but you want to get good at all of them. You, know, you want to just adapt to the situation that you're in. That's the best for you. Um, and then I'll go over the three stances. Now the three stances, the, the most basic, the straddle. I think you're going to be forced into the straddle on the course the most. Um, that's what I do. I like the straddle because, you know, you want to be like water. You want to be like Bruce Lee said, like water. You want to adapt to the environment that you're in. So if the environment tells you, you know, this is a straddle putt, Make sure you practice the straddle you know if the environment tells you you need a little bit more zip you want to go with the stagger you know that's what you want so the second stance the stagger you can start your weight forward rock it back and then back forward this will let you get a little bit more zip on the putt it'll let you follow through inside the circle still because your second foot isn't passing the line of your first foot so now you can follow through on a putt that you know you might have been a little short with this putt but now you can get your legs involved a little bit more. That's a great way to add power for the stance. So I'll use that for, you know, you know, circle two putts right there, whereas the straddle, 
I like for circle one putt consistency. The last one is for distance. You just want to do your step. Um, this allows you to have it, all your momentum going towards your target. You can follow through entirely. It's like a baseball throw or football throw at this point now. Um, so those are the three stances. The straddle I think is best for close distance, the stagger for intermediate, and then finally the step. Um, you know, if you're trying to get those, you know, circle three, you know, long circle two putts in, those it's nice to have. Um, now the last little tip, if you stuck around here, um, how you get that extra little bit of pop. Um, I like to point my elbow right at the target. So I'll show you here, elbow up at the target, follow through. I'll just point it right where I'm trying to throw. Um, this does a few things for you. Number one, it gets your angle of release or your, your height of release right. Because you want to make sure that you're released at least this high, you know. Um, number two, it gets a little extra momentum going for you, which is ultimately what, what the turbo putt comes down to is you know, how much spin and momentum can you get on the disc. So this will get that extra little momentum. I see a lot of people turbo putt like this. They'll just put one arm, arm up in the air and they'll go you know, something like that. Um, and they won't get the second arm involved. And you can see, you know, if you get that second arm involved, my momentum is already carrying me towards the basket. So I think that's nice to have. And it's something that, you know, sort of goes unnoticed with a lot of turbo putters that I know. I see most, most people I do see with a, a turbo putt similar to that. And this is more of, you know, just throwing a baseball. I was a baseball player, you know, growing up in football. So I think this is more of a, a baseball throw adapted for disc golf, which, which is great. So those are the three, those are my tips that I have for you. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you keep practicing those, practicing those turbo putts. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Only Dave's checking out. See you later.